the rolling action. So, Soko family, peace of Christ be with everyone. So, today I'm going to be doing what will probably be my penultimate video on Adnan. Uh, I'm doing this video because I asked him not once, not twice, but three times to dialogue. But each time we see what happened when I approached him. It would have been better for him to discuss my questions, but for some reason, I'm now on the same blacklist as Paul Williams. <laughs> not because I've said anything negative about Adnan or the Dow team, but because I see through their charade and I'm able to debunk their claims. And this is what, why Christ said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like the whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanliness. Because we recognize them not by their words, but by highlighting the self-serving lies and hypocritical behavior. And we know the truth will always prevail over falsehood. This is why Adnan's own words and actions have been brought against him and brought his own reputation into disrepute. And now he even goes to the extent of taking people away from our conversations. Isn't that embarrassing? So what I find strange is when Raj approached Adnan, he was quick to run and tell the police. Okay, Adnan Rashid, you did try and get me um, down for harassment. I spoke to Speezy Barnes and he said, I'm fine. So what I want to say to you is that I did make a mistake the other day about um, Guru Tegh Bahadur, but you actually said Guru Tegh Bahadur is a murderer. And when we also saw how quickly Mansour was to run and to complain to the police, to all have a briefing with Steve and understand the bylaws that are in operation here before you come. So what's your point? What are you trying to say? My point is, if, I have go, if I've gone to a police officer because of people heckling and Steve has ways of heckling. Uh, case. But yet, when there's an actual person who was a threat to the public in the park, an actual extremist, convicted terrorists right here in speaker's corner they never once ran to the police so we have to ask ourselves where are their priorities and why are their priorities so misplaced and we wonder why then people distrust their motives and have questioned why they turn a blind eye to what has been happening in the park muslim extremists coming in and they do not bat an eyelid but then they have shown that they are more than capable to run to the police but when it goes against things when people are heckling them but you know the people want to see why don't they approach the police when we have extremists in the park so now they boycott me because I see through all their ways but unlike Adnan and the Dow team I use facts with my argument which we clearly see they don't like because it exposes their hypocrisy and their double standards but as Jesus said in Matthew 12 37 for by your words you shall be justified and by your words you shall be condemned and so Adnan and the others stand condemned not by me but by their own words and their checkered past because I've always wondered why is it Adnan, who is a self-proclaimed learned person, why does this person resort to lowball tactics of belittling his interlocker by using ad hominems such as calling them extremists like him? He's an extremist. Hate. He's a hate preacher. I, hate. I don't like extremists. Usually I don't like you're, you're racist right. extremists yeah. like you. My claim is that you, you are racist. Free. My claim is you're racist. Right. We're going to ask Miss Hopkins oh, why does she peddle so much hate against Muslims? Now, what Islamophobes do, like him, because he is he's, he is in league with Islamophobes. I have seen him on platforms with open Islam haters and Islamophobes, and I wouldn't even be surprised if he gets paid for it. When he rarely has evidence. So, however, it's ironic that Adnan resorts to calling non-Muslims extremists and terrorists 
when Adnan is the only person in this park who has been seen defending a convicted terrorist. If you cannot respond, let me respond. This guy is an open supporter of Tommy Robinson. What were you doing with Anjan Chowdhury? Abu, what were you doing with Anjan Chowdhury? An Islamophobe, and he's in prison right now as we speak for breaking the law. And what about Anjan Chowdhury, Abu? What about Anjan Chowdhury, Abu? What about Anjan Chowdhury, Abu? Have you noticed they only give generic condemnation of terrorists and as Christ said but all their works they do for to be seen of men they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments so what Christ is saying here in his condemnation of the Pharisees is they used to do these things in public to appease the public to portray an image but then their words and their actions went against what they were saying. But yet, I'm yet to see Adnan or any of the Dawa team specifically call out any extremist Muslims by name. And by extremists, I don't just mean the ones who have been convicted, but the ones who are actively promoting extremist propaganda. And we see the Dawa team have defended Adnan rigorously. So I wonder if they will also excuse the behaviour of the one wannabe Birmingham thug who Adnan associates with. And this is a thug who threatened Saracen, one of the most respectable and civil Muslims in the park. Why are you being a puppet for Sheikh? No, 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 don't call me a puppet on camera. Because you know what, I'm from Birmingham. No, 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 please, 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 now I've watched many of Adnan's videos and I've always wondered why he resorts to trying to defame people. Then I came across a video with a discussion he had with Kalam where he said anyone who criticizes Islam or, uh, anyone who attacks the prophet's sanctity yeah I'm not yeah. saying it's you yeah but anyone like for example we can't like them we can't like yeah them. we can't, we can't like them. Okay. there's no love, talk, talk like to me. No love talk about no, me. Yeah. so if there is no love does that make them an enemy of Islam so then this made sense of his behavior. I asked myself, for someone who is as learned as Adnan claimed to be, why does he embellish so much? And then I came across a statement by Ahmad ibn Nakib al Misri from the Shafi School of Islamic Jurisprudence. And in the Reliance of the Traveler, it says, speaking is a means to achieve objectives. If a praiseworthy aim is attainable through both telling the truth and lying, it is unlawful to accomplish through lying because there is no need for it. When it is permissible, when it is possible to achieve such an aim by lying, but not by telling the truth, it is permissible to lie if attaining the goal is permissible. When the purpose of lying is to circumvent someone who is preventing one from doing something permissible. And obligatory to lie if the goal is obligatory. It is religiously precautionary in all cases to employ words that give misleading impressions. One should compare the bad consequences entailed by lying to those entailed by telling the truth. And if the consequences of telling the truth are more damaging, one is entitled to lie. So then this philosophy started to make sense when, it put, when I put Adnan's words with his actions and it put it into perspective. So a few weeks ago, Adnan spoke to Kay and he said, You don't spread hate by saying, I am here to spread hate. How you spread hate is the way extremists, um, for example, the language they use. Okay, yeah. Hate can be um, seen in the language. Okay, Their words. When I heard that, I asked myself, if that is the case, then when it came to the New Zealand killer, did Adnan read his manifesto and intentionally lie to mislead people and deceive them? Or did he not read the manifesto and falsely accuse the killer of being a Christian to incite hatred towards Christians? Because according to Adnan, that is how extremists spread hate. So in the video, he said, We're going to go to some hate preachers in the park and ask them whether they condemn what happened in Christchurch. 
Do you condemn the Christchurch attack as a terrorist, as a Christian terrorist attack? This is not a Christian terrorist attack. The guy was a Christian. He was a Christian. He was a crusader. He was a crusader. He was a crusader. He is his manifesto. And what does he say? He is not a Christian, Armand. Does he say that? Does he say that? Does he say that? Wait. Okay. Okay. So he. Please read it. You never read it. Why are you Can you read it? Can you read it? Why are you hate practicing hate towards Christians? Here is Can you read it? Eight four pages of manifesto. Can you read it? Did you read it, Adnan? When you finished. Adnan, did you read it? When you finished. Adnan, did you read it? When you finished. for the source. Adnan, did you read it? Can you read where he said I'm not a Christian? Now, it, this is not the rhetoric of someone who is looking objectively into the subject. Now, this is an article from the Independent about the Sri Lankan attacks, and it says Sri Lanka's defence minister has claimed a series of deadly bombings on churches and hotels were carried out in retaliation for shootings at the mosques in New Zealand city of Christchurch. Ruan Wijewardini said two small domestic Islamic terrorist groups were believed to have carried out the Easter Sunday attacks which killed at least 321 people and wounded 500 others. So clearly the retaliatory attacks against the Christians were in response for something that was committed by an ethno-nationalist and not a Christian. But Adnan didn't seem to have any issue or problem with trying to portray the New Zealand attacker as a Christian in order to create animosity towards Christians. This is the same Adnan who said... How you spread hate is the way extremists, um, for example, the language they use. So the question is, why did Adnan intentionally mislead people? In the New Zealand attacker's manifesto, what he actually put was under the question, were you or are you a Christian? His response was, this is complicated. When I know, I will tell you. But Christ says, whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. So even by Jesus' own words, he is not a Christian. And when I try to even explain this point to Abbas, the person who has been spanked and cooked by Majid Nawaz on LBC numerous times, he said, Forget the manifesto. So why are you? If anyone missed what he said, let's listen again. In his manifesto, he put specifically. Forget the manifesto. So why are you? Now, does this strike you as someone whose response is of a sincere person? Does this sound like the response of someone who stands for truth? Or does this sound like a wolf in sheep's clothing? Because if he was a genuine person, he would have said, yes, the attacker was not a Christian and he did not claim to be a Christian. But then he would have said, in honesty, that Adnan's words were wrong for trying to implicate this person as being a Christian or imply he was a Christian. But neither of them cared for the truth. But yet we see Abbas even rejected the testimony of the attacker because it goes against his own agenda. And this is the subterfuge of the people that we are dealing with. And this is why they don't want to talk to me, because every time they talk to me, they get themselves busted. So what was the real reason behind the New Zealand attack? When he addresses it, he says, I was traveling as a tourist in Western Europe at the time, France, Spain, Portugal and others. The first event that began to change began the change was a terror attack in Stockholm on the 7th of April 2017. It was another terror attack in the seemingly never-ending attacks that have been occurring on a regular basis throughout my adult life. But for some reason this was different. The jaded cynicism with which I had greeted previous attacks didn't eventuate. Something had been part of my life for as long as I can remember. Cynicism in the face of the attacks on the West by Islamic invaders was suddenly no longer there. I could no longer bring the sneer to my face. I could no longer turn my back to the violence. Something this time was different. The difference was Ebba Ackerland, the young, innocent and dead Ebba. Ebba was walking to meet her mother after school 
when she was murdered by an Islamic attacker driving a stolen vehicle through the shopping promenade on which she was walking. Ebba was partially deaf, unable to hear the attacker coming. Ebba, death at the hands of the invaders, the indignity of her violent demise and my inability to stop it broke through my own jaded cynicism like a sledgehammer. I could no longer ignore the attacks. They were attacks on my people, attacks on my culture, attacks on my faith and attacks on my soul. They would not be ignored. So this is the reason behind his incentivization to perpetuate the, Isla uh, the shootings of the mosque. But where did we hear Adnan or the Islamic Dawa team touch upon these subjects? And this is why we say, instead of in creating false narratives about the attacker's motives, how about the Dawa team address the actual motivations for his actions? Islamic terrorism. Perfect. Calling out people like Abu Qasim, who was putting out terrorist materials on a website, inciting others to perpetuate terrorist attacks who was convicted to four and a half years in prison. But yet we heard nothing, even though they were made aware of his actions, but even if, he, but even if his name was Ter Tommy Robinson, we would never hear the end of it. We see people like Abu Hakim, who said they would not report a fellow Muslim if they were about to commit a terrorist attack. Why did they not speak up about this? But they brushed these things under the carpet. Now, the New Zealand attacker also wrote on his views about foreigners and he says under the heading did you personally hate foreigners or other cultures? He put no I spent many years traveling through many many nations everywhere I traveled barring a few small exceptions I was treated wonderfully often as a guest and even as a friend the varied cultures of the world greeted me with warmth and compassion and I was very much enjoyed nearly every moment I spent with them. I wished the different peoples of their world of the world their world all the best regardless of their ethnicity, race, culture, or faith, and they live in peace and prosperity amongst their own people, practicing their own traditions in their own nations. But if those same people seek to come to my people's lands, replace my peoples, subjugate my people, make war upon my me people then I shall be forced to fight them and nothing in and hold nothing in reserve. So does this sound like a Christian or an ethno-nationalist? Because he does not want foreigners in his land. Again, we see that this person is an ethno-nationalist. So why did they try and implicate him as a Christian and whose motivations were in a sense Christian motivations? They weren't. So it is evidently clear for all to see he was an ethno-nationalist, not a Christian, but neither Adnan nor the Dawa team who wish to push this narrative about him do not care about the facts and continue to, to do so despite the evidence suggesting otherwise. And the question is why? So in another video, we see Adnan say of DCCI She is Christian ISIS! We she is Christian ISIS without guns! And I'll tell you one thing, if these people got their hands on guns, we Muslims, we would be in danger! But we know, if we were in Islamic lands under a caliphate, Adnan would have no problem of calling us enemies of Islam and for us to face the consequences of Sharia law. So I ask everyone to consider the language Adnan uses, words filled with venomous intent. By his own words, does this sound like Adnan is trying to spread love or hate? Is he an extremist according to his own words? Now, when I approached him for the third time, he said, don't, don't you feel ashamed begging me for having a conversation with you? Don't like, you feel ashamed? Like you were doing to uh, Katie Hopkins. Oh, like you were doing to Katie Hopkins. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're begging, begging me. Katie Hopkins. You're, you're, begging, me. Katie Hopkins. you're, 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 Hopkins. you're begging me for hits. When the police you're had to begging stop me you because yeah, yeah, yeah. you were following a woman. You were following a woman. You were following a woman. So who's actually paying you for peddling hate against Muslims? Can I know? We want to know. We're interested because you lie about Muslims a lot. You lie. You lie about our demographics you lie about what we do socially you lie about 
Muslims at large, and you have caused a lot of attacks against Muslim women. People, white supremacists, terrorists are inspired by you. They, they read your articles. They read your articles. Thanks very much. They read your articles and they conduct attack against Muslims, right? So, so she's actually running away, as you can see. She doesn't want to talk to someone who can respond to her points. Someone who is informed enough to respond to her points. Adnan, Look, can we have a conversation? Let's have a conversation about Adnan, oh. about Abu Qasim. No, no. no. <laughs> no. He did to me before. Abu Qasim, can we talk about this, this whole thing? So now the shoe is on the other foot. It seems the cat has got Adnan's tongue and he can't hack the hack. <laughs> so why does Adnan have a problem when all I'm doing is exactly what he has done to others? When he approached Katie Hopkins, he said to her, Do you want me to pull some of your articles out right now? Do you want me to read your statements to you? So how about I use some of Adnan's words and criteria against him and read some of his own statements? All right. So in speaking with Raj and Steve, he said, from 2000, from 2001 until 2010, I was on a search. I was studying, I was reading, I was doing courses. I went to different people, listened to different talks and lectures. The wrong one. Uh, I listened to Ahmad Didad, I listened to Zakir Naik. I listened no, to no, Zakir no, Naik. No, 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 no. Then he goes on to say, does this guy support Tommy Robinson? Who, okay. let me finish, who is a well-known extremist who had be, who's a convicted criminal okay he had a criminal uh, conviction for fraud he was convicted criminally for breaking uh, the court rules of uh, uh, contempt of court okay he directly inspired uh, Osborn who mowed down Muslims innocent Muslims in Finsbury Park there is a direct link made by the newspapers okay so because he said there was a direct link made by newspapers so I decided to look at what the newspaper said about Zakir Naik <laughs> and if there was any direct links to terrorism made by them. All right. <laughs> so in the Washington Post in 2016, it says, New Delhi, one of the terrorists in the deadly Dhaka restaurant attacks last week had posted a Facebook message quoting the sayings of the controversial Mumbai-based Islamic preacher Zakir Naik urging all Muslims to be terrorists. Wow. Then it goes on to say one of his most controversial remarks on TV was about Osama bin Laden. He said, if he is fighting the enemies of Islam, I am for him. I don't know him personally. If he what if he's terrorizing America, the biggest terrorist, I am with him. Every Muslim should be a terrorist. The thing is that if he is terrorizing the terrorist, he is following Islam. So does Adnan agree with these statements? In the Hindu, it says, members of an IS-inspired terror group who were arrested in January for allegedly planning a mass killing at a temple were inspired by speeches of Islamic preacher Zakir Naik, according to a charge sheet filed by the anti-terrorism squad. So now we see high-level government officials labeling him as an extremist. Then we see another article. Spread the lies. That's a lie. That's a lie. There's no takia here. We are not. No. So why are you engaging in takia? No, I'm not. I'm not Shi'is. I am Sunni. You know? You, you say that's a Shi'is. For Shia. Sunni. Thank you, baby. Right, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to listen to yeah, the lie. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put you on camera if you look again. No, no, no. If you interrupt. Okay, wait. If you interrupt, we'll put your camera on you, yeah? Fair? yeah? Yeah, fair, fair. I want to I wanna be fair. Uh, oh. So it says, speaking of Zakir Naik, Indian preacher Zakir Naik is banned from the UK. So, an Indian, the article says, an Indian Muslim preacher has been banned from entering the UK for his unacceptable behaviour, the Home Secretary says. Now, the Home Secretary can stop people entering the UK if she believes there is a threat to national security, public order or the safety of citizens. That includes banning people if she believes their views glorify terrorism, promote violence or encourage other serious crimes. So he was even banned in this country by Theresa May for being 
seen as an extremist or as someone who promotes terrorist or glorifies terrorism and we have another article it says Islamic preacher Zakir Naik banned from giving public speeches in Malaysia now the context of this is from when he left India he went into Malaysia for uh, to, um, to to stay for asylum or whatever you want to call it so that's where he's based now but even within Malaysia he has been banned from public speaking it says Malaysian police said that this has been done in the interest of national security Zakir Naik was quizzed for 10 hours by the police just a day before the fresh development so we see the media have identified him as directly inspiring terrorists so by Adnan's own criteria does that make him a terrorist supporter and now we look and see a Facebook quote from Adnan in March 2015 it says if Zakir is an extremist then who is normal how many people has he killed how many rapes is he responsible for how many countries has he raided and plundered all this man has done is spread peace and coexistence the media and political establishment have a problem with Islam and those who preach it they will cherry pick from a myriad of statements and will do their best to alienate Muslims further the media has the audacity to pick on peaceful Muslims while ignoring the biggest mass murderers plunderers and rapists on the planet we are living in extreme times so my question is how does Adnan feel about openly supporting someone the media has identified as someone who directly influences extremists and terrorists Adnan also accused Soko of supporting terrorism when he said Martin Selner was a man who inspired the New Zealand attack directly who says so not me not Adnan Rashid this is not my view why because the New Zealand attacker quoted Selna right and Selna was arrested by the Austrian government for doing that for inspiring terrorism against Muslims this channel when posted a video on Selna's speech or Tommy Robinson when he came to do Selna's speech here in the park this channel described him as a journalist as a journalist and no corrections but even though he was arrested as a terrorist by or accused terrorist or someone who inspired terrorism against the Muslim people and this channel refuses to change that this channel actually spreads hate and terrorism against Muslims but in another article on Zakir Naik it says why is Zakir Naik a wanted man Zakir Naik fled India in the wake of the Dhaka cafe blast in 2016 he is accused of spreading hatred funding terror and money laundering he is now facing troubles in Malaysia which has given him permanent residency so here is a man who inspired terrorism and fled the country when it came out when the information came to light so if he was innocent why did Zakir Naik run will Adnan publicly denounce Zakir Naik this is why when you live in a glass house you should not throw stones and we also see Hezbollah to here which is an organization which calls for a global caliphate and we see here in an image Abu Qasim was at their rally now in another Facebook quote from Adnan he says and in 2013 if one claims to be a Muslim and does not want Islam as their government governing system in his or her, her country then this person does not know what Islam is this person doesn't even know what a Muslim is a Muslim's life belo belongs to Allah completely whether a Muslim is in bed or sitting on a throne may Allah guide some of these people with Muslim names who appear to be opposing Islam they are either very ignorant or a bunch of hypocrites pretending to be Muslims how can one believe in justice and not want it and then in the next Facebook post he says any Muslim who rejects Sharia law apostatizes from Islam a Muslim has no choice but to accept Sharia and submit to it so the question is if you do not accept Sharia you're an apostate and we all know what happens to apostates 
and Adnan is publicly putting this on his Facebook page. So in another post we see Adnan actually from the beginning it says this is how Obama paid tribute to Nelson Mandela's unjust imprisonment at Robben Island. On behalf of our family we are deeply humbled to stand where men of such courage face down injustices and refuse to yield. The world is grateful for the heroes of Robben Island who remind us that no shackles or cells can match the strength of the human spirit. This is the same man who upholds one of the biggest injustices in the world, Guantanamo Bay, where human spirit resists the shackles of injustice to this day. Afia Siddiqui still refuses to yield to oppression and some Palestinians continue to suffer to cruelty, far worse than what Mandela has experienced. But the thing is, when we look at the profile of Afia and we look on Wikipedia, it says she is a Pakistani neuroscientist with degrees from MIT and Brandeis University. He was convicted of multiple felonies. In 2010, she was convicted of seven counts of attempted murder and the assault of US personnel and is serving her 86 year sentence at the Federal Medical Center in Fort Worth, Texas. In May 2004, the FBI named Sadiqi as one of its seven most wanted terrorists. Her whereabouts were reported to have been unknown until she was arrested in July 2008 in Afghanistan. Upon her arrest, the Afghan report, police reported she was carrying in her purse handwritten notes and a computer thumb drive containing recipes for conventional bombs and weapons of mass destruction. Instructions on how to make machines to shoot down US drones, descriptions of New York City's landmarks with references to mass casualty attack and two pounds of sodium cyanide in a glass jar. And this is someone again that Adnan was publicly defending along with Sheikh Faisal and Abu Qasim. And these comments were all written after Adnan's self-proclaimed Islamic journey from 2001 to 2010. And one other thing that I came across was of his son Musa who was on an ITV documentary called Exposing Charities where an undercover reporter recorded him as saying Essentially we cannot tell them or go on jihad hmm. We can't tell them that. We're not at the You know why we can't tell them But what we can tell them is to learn the Quran To start praying Once they have the Iman in their heart And they feel that the Ummah's problem is their problem They will start to act by themselves The first level is for worship The second level is on top of that worship with more action and the more action you give the more charity you give the more dua you make the more you go there whether you make jihad you make jihad depending on the brother's sister so clearly we see that apple does not far, fall far from the tree <laughs> for someone who is so against extremism why is it we see all this evidence which is a public cause for concern because even in 2015 the government identified Dawa man as having views which are counter to British democracy and this was one of his son's associates and it says the extremist extremism analysis unit has been been established to support all government departments and the wider public sector to understand extremism so they can deal with extremists extremists appropriately in 2014 there were at least 70 events involving speakers who are known to have promoted rhetoric that aimed to undermine core British values of democracy the rule of law individual liberty and mutual respect and tolerance for those with different faiths and beliefs held on university campuses and here they named our man one of his son's associates as one of those extremist speakers so at, maybe Adnan should spend more time trying to identify why his extremist radar seems to stop working with within the Islamic community especially when they're standing right beside him rather than spend his time insulting slandering and demonizing non-muslims so if anyone is wondering if I have a vendetta against Adnan <laughs> I don't I don't have any I don't have any affinity to any of the people that he has oh yes I do no I don't <laughs> <laughs> ah, we can edit that one out. <laughs> so if anyone is wondering if I have a vendetta against Adnan, I don't. 
I don't have an affinity to the people that he has attacked personally. I got tired of hearing the venomous rhetoric over and over and over again. His antics caused me to question his character and take a closer look at his actions which he needs to clean up. Because when, you're, when you compound lies upon lies, it's, un, it's easy to unravel the lies. So people like Adnan should not hate me for showing people their own words and their own deeds. Adnan and the Dawa team are the gift that keeps on giving because their reactions are always full of insincerity and they will always trip themselves up and get themselves busted when we have a, when they have a chance to redeem themselves. That is why I tried to engage Adnan three times but he refused to speak to me but all I have to say is shame on Adnan. They all implicate themselves and Britain is watching. The people at these venues that Adnan goes to are watching. Can I respond to this? I think it's no, unfair. no, so this is a private oh, video. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, private speakers. Come well, on. you can respond afterwards. I will just Thank move you. over there. Because um, <laughs> I want to finish what I've got okay, to say. Well, I think it would be very unfair on Adnan. Well, he, I can respond to him in a dialogue because that's what I'm doing yeah, this video. But, also, but this is what I believe I'm, in truth. And I think you're, you're exaggerating and distorting elements of, uh, uh, of it, which are well, you yeah, yeah, let me, because um, we're just going to edit this bit out because I want to just finish this. And if you want to comment, that's fine. But I just want to finish on what I said. So, so don't hate me for showing people your own words and deeds. Adnan and the Dawa team are the gift that keeps on giving because their reaction are always full of insincerity and they will always trip themselves up and get themselves busted when they have a chance to redeem themselves. That is why I tried to engage Adnan three times, but he refused. And we know the Dawa team implicate themselves because the whole of Britain is watching. The people at these venues that Adnan goes to debate at are watching. Everything they say and do will be scrutinized. And the one more final thing I want to address is the Sheikh Faisal video where we hear Adnan's voice. Now look at you brothers, about 50 of you, I can see about 40 of you at least. Yeah? Now it's easy to come and listen to the lecture. But I know it's very hard to implement it physically. When it comes down to when the test of Iman comes, you might think, oh, the Kufar media thing, they will take our picture, they will put us under surveillance. So what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest, Allah is the protector. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil, that's what we believe in. If, if we have Iman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe that Allah will protect us, regardless where we are. If if you won't get caught in this today, tomorrow they will come and knock your door. Now this case is very important for Muslims because this is the first step. This is the first step to make Muslims life hell in this country. We all know that. I have no doubts about it. If anyone's got doubts about it, go and find out. This case is very important, and this case needs our support. Adnan's online response was this. This video is evidently doctored. I do not remember attending any such gatherings in 2003. I have never supported any extremist terrorists in my life. Then he says, goes on and says, even if this clip is not doctored and if it is indeed myself speaking, where am I actually defending terrorism and or a terrorist? So even if, so we even hear his name mentioned in the video. And I have seen the original upload which is still on YouTube and it was uploaded in 2010 but Adnan said he was on a journey until 2010. So it seems strange that someone would doctor a video of him at that point in time when he wasn't a prominent Islamic speaker. A voice in the Islamic community. He was a on a on a journey. <laughs> so the problem is with lies is that once you spin a web of lies, you will eventually get caught in them. So the predicament then becomes: Do you double down on your lie, or do you own up to it and admit the truth? This is the dilemma Adnan will have to ask himself. They say it's better to own a situation than let the situation own you. And a YouTuber co commenter masterfully conveyed what everyone was thinking when he wrote that. And he says, Adnan, 
You at Speaker's Corner this weekend lying again. Why can't you be the bigger man and admit, admit to the mistakes of your past and move on? Do you think you are infallible and someone who cannot make mistakes? I once had respect for you. Now I realise you are simply an insincere liar who is an embarrassment to the British Pakistani community. I don't know why you are pre why I don't know why any practicing Muslim would follow or learn want to learn from someone who lies so blatantly. So whether Adnan admits it or not, the the, the confirmation will come out because there are many Muslims whose faces we can see on that video. And once we get one of them to confirm that Adnan was the one on camera, of course it'll be game, set and match. Yeah. So if Adnan was... Well, I, I don't know any Muslim who, and I spoke to many privately, every single Muslim I've ever spoken to, 100% of them state that it is Adnan I've spoken to that denies it. The only one who does deny it is Adnan Rashid. Well, uh, of course it's him. No, but I'm telling you, this is uh, unofficially, all the Muslims I've spoken to, they all know it's him. But the question is, are you milking this in a way that is, uh, that is going beyond really what is necessary? That, that's what I'm afraid of. So, we have confirmation as well that many Muslims know that it was Adnan on video. Yes, of course it is. So if Adnan was a true follower of Christ, as he says he is, then he would have no problem in being truthful but clearly his dean has failed him. He's a human being we, who makes we have to right. We have to ask, why is it... Unless you should be judged. Because we have to ask us, why is it that Adnan has been linked to extremists and terrorists left, right and centre over the years, a historical, revolu rev a historical revisionist who consistently has overlooked or defended radical Muslims. But the public can clearly see and decide whether they believe he is an extremist sympathizer. If there is anything Adnan wants to come uh, clarify, the invitation is here. If you want to have a dialogue with me, I will happily have a conversation with him. But my question is, who is really doing more damage to the Islamic community? The likes of Tommy Robinson, or the Dawah team and the Muslims at the park who have a siege mentality and think they can pull the wall over the public's eyes but everyone can see through their theatrics and this is the problem so on that note I would just like to say thanks to the hard work to all the people that have done the groundwork in helping bring various pieces of information to light because a lot of what I have been able to reference in these videos has been built on the efforts of others so even if the information people have been documenting is not used today it will be used tomorrow, even if that's in 5, 10 or 15 years from now. If not by me, there are many others in the waiting, in line to hold them to account, a lot of the Dawah team. And the question is, because when you play the long game, it's only a matter of time before the mask falls off. So in closing, the public can clearly see through the subterfuge and the charades of some of the Dawah team. These are people who should spend more time ta trying to tackle real extremism in the park because when the next extremist comes to the park and they, that's not, it'll be a when, not if, the people will be watching how will they react to these people. When people come to them with their concerns, will they continue to turn a blind eye? Or will they actually try and engage with these people and highlight their extremist views and get the, in, the good Muslims in the park to separate themselves from them? Or will they just turn a blind eye and defend them as Ad, um, Ad, Adnan did with Abu Qasim? So, on that note, we have to say, I have to say to the public, keep up the good work and stay vigilant. Hold these people, hold these people to account and let's keep the park and the country safe and continue to document anything that is suspicious. So on that note, Matt Lock is signing out. May the peace of Christ be with everyone. Flawless victory.